What is up everybody? Chris at Team Aquascape here and we have a bird loving pondless waterfall today. It is going to be a nice little meandering pondless waterfall. It's going to be started off with a stacked slate sphere, one of the small ones. And it looks like we've got about five tons of boulder and about a ton of gravel. The guys are working, finishing up, loading up all the rest of the tools. You can see all the products loaded up in the truck behind me. So once we get that done, we are ready to rock and roll out of here. So let's get moving. All right, so we're just pulling up to the job site, walking in the backyard. Looks like uh, Mr. Helfrich is already here. What's up, dude? I'm admiring the new tool. <laughs> oh, gosh. Careful. When, when have you ever seen anything so shiny? We could we could huh? shave you with that thing. <laughs> Get rid of that quarantine beard. We don't want to do oh. that. Helfrich is a little out of commission today. He tweaked his back a little bit playing uh, foosball. <laughs> so. Don't, you're, don't, not supposed, you're not supposed to spin it. Don't do that. You're Relax. Relax. So really, really fun project today. Bird loving stream was, um, I guess, what you called it in the video. I came on the consultation. Gosh, it just feels like two, three weeks ago. It was easy to uh, cut. It was super easy to tell that they were in love with birds because there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine feeders I can see in the backyard. And I think there's some in the front yard too. You have yeah. to believe them. Yeah, <laughs> we'll show you later. Yeah. But uh, gonna build a bird loving stream here. But what I always wanna do is give them a little something to see from inside. And this yard definitely slopes this way. Yep. Like so many yards. So the addition of some of our fountain type scapes are perfect for this. And I really like the idea of a small sphere mm -hmm. sitting here. Birds love to come and just kind of sit on the top of it and grab some water or bathe or whatever. That'll give them the view from inside the house. We'll get this up, the bottom of this up about six, eight inches, mm -hmm. somewhere in there, just enough to give us a little babbly brook towards the patio. And then if, I don't know if you guys can see this, but we'll actually take this dirt then down. You can see right now over time, this is probably just risen due to mulching, Over -mulching. and plantings sure. and everything else. So when we drop this elevation down below the patio, not only by giving that six, eight inches up and then dropping this two to three inches lower than the patio, then we get a more substantial babbling brook coming this way. From here, it'll go in a really shallow type pool, twist and turn and meander down into our reservoir sitting right over mm -hmm. here. Here's where our elevation actually works with us because the yard's sloping away. So we'll get some more babbly brook type waterfalls before it terminates down into our six block reservoir right where I'm standing. Nice. We've already found some lighting out here. That's a challenge and a good thing because we can just tap our lights right into their lights. And the other challenge we might face is we've got a downspout and a sump pump line mm -hmm. running right through here. Could be a challenge or it could be another advantage to us because then we can take our overflow and hopefully tie it right into that. Pretty quick job, five tons of stone. We might have some extras. We've got some flagstone left from the previous job that he had. I think he built it 15 years ago and it was one of the preformed tub streams. It was like one into the plastic next and the next. To a plastic pool, to a plastic pool, to then a liner pond nice. down in the bottom. So design explanation is over. Now it's time for the real work to begin, <laughs> which Juan has already started and unloading the truck. Sounds like I heard some air brakes up front. So our rock is on time this morning, which yeah, is always great. That's awesome. Okay, so reservoir is now laid out. It's a six small aqua block reservoir. That sphere is going to start up there into an upper pool, dump that way into another pooling area, which will take really close to the patio, probably dig it underneath those daylilies. Then it's gonna dog leg back hard to the right, drop down into a little stream, and then it'll come into the reservoir somewhere down into here. Pump vault is probably going to sit in this location here. If we get lucky, we may be able to tie uh, our overflow into the pipe that um, takes the rainwater and the sump pump water and discharges it out all the way down into that pond, if we're lucky. The next thing is dig, dig, dig. So it is just a little bit after nine. We get started at about 7.45, eight o'clock. So an hour in and we have the reservoir completely dug. Now it's time for fabric liner fabric. We get the aqua blocks back in, get everything backfilled. And then we are going to start rocking into this stream. 
It's gonna be a very bird loving stream, so not any of these big, tall cascades that uh, sometimes you're normally used to seeing on our channel. It's gonna be very, uh, way more directional and these little tiny babbly brook kind of drops, backwater areas, pooling areas, so on and so forth. This is our reservoir liner. It is a 15 by 15. We have a 10 by 25 to go in after this to help with our stream, we'll do an overlap. We're gonna run a little overflow outside of here, just like a little gravel low edge here, so that when this thing does fill up, it will gently overflow and then kind of trickle out to the lawn and everything slopes away back towards that retention pond. We had two liners for this project. We had a 10 by 15 and then a 15 by 15. Because of the, I guess it would be the lack of elevation change on this project and the fact that we have two liners, it is going to be very difficult to pull off a successful overlap by doing just these little two, three, maybe four inch waterfalls. So rather than chance it, we're gonna take the extra time and we are going to seam the two pieces of the liner together just behind what will be this second waterfalls here. So what you see the guys doing now is they are rolling out the cover tape they're going to cut it make sure that they have enough but they're going to seam the two pieces of the liner together so the way this process works we've got a video and we'll link it uh, in the description below on how we do seams but we are going to prime the bottom liner put a piece of double-sided tape down then prime the top liner fold it over the top of the double-sided tape and then prime again and then run this long six inch cover tape which is only tacky um, or has adhesive on one side of it and that will go down to cover the entire seam. This is a time consuming part of the process. Everything wants to be dry, clean surface before we prime so that we make sure we get a nice tight bond. This is gonna take a little bit of time so we will set the time lapse up and you can watch and it'll get done in about seven seconds, YouTube time. But for us, it should take us about half hour uh, to 40 minutes to get this thing done. So you can see the hose. This is filling our upper pool. Now we have the reservoir completely full. These are the two ball valves that are coming in through a bulkhead fitting in the liner right back here. The two inch line runs this way all the way around and it's right about where the customer there is, is handling the low voltage line. So that's where our two inch line comes from. The reservoir filling up this pool now to make sure that all of our foam holds. You can see we have our Staxley sphere plumbed that has a two inch line coming up to it. We ran some foam around it just to make it nice and tight. And then we also put a one watt light right there to illuminate the whole upper cooling area of that sphere. Also notice that light is facing back that way. The guys did a great job of orienting that light so that it shoots away from the viewing area, where, which is where I am, and pointing back that way. And also a really neat thing, and a reason they did that, was that water, as it's agitated, is going to make these wavy marks as it breaks the rays of light, and it will cast those cool shadows and stuff up on that overstory uh, silver maple right there. So that'll be a really, really cool effect that the homeowners have probably never seen before from their, their original water feature. Rock work is all done in here we're just graveling stuff it just looks really really nice bird loving stream the water is going to come all the way up to the patio we'll, we might pull out a couple cobbles just to make it a little bit closer to the patio the height of the water in this pool is dictated by that stone right there which is a little waterfall rock that feeds that next pooling area and then the pitcher falls that dumps down into the basin so you can see the water is already starting to pool up in there it's going to start to overflow this rock all the water should come between this big rock and this big rock kind of come this way nice gentle stream kick over twist and turn and then go that way so finishing touches now landscape plants dirt work hooking up the lights all that good stuff we are in the home stretch now now it's time to just button everything up and make this thing look incredible
the power button. There it is. Uh huh. All right. We found this garden gnome. You can see he fits in perfectly with the landscape. <laughs> right there. We we unearthed him and now we're gonna keep him. So. That's right. Yes. Yeah. So Nick, if you could just stay here. Oh yeah. Love it. Look at that, baby. I love the stack slate sphere. Oh, yes. And look at the stream and waterfalls. It looks so beautiful.